is Dr. Wooden, and this is my first writing um, video. So this is going to be very, very basic, and I'm going to focus on informational writing because there's a way to set up uh, your essay for informational writing, and then there's another way when you write a narrative or an opinion paper. But we are focusing on information. And I have a picture here of a big I. I stands for information. So here, the I, whenever you start an informational piece, you have to have a really good introduction. After you have your introduction, then you have three facts you want to write about. So, and we'll get into it. I'm just going over this very basic right now. The F, and notice it's I-N-F-O, which stands for info. So the F stands for facts. If you're writing information, it's all factual. It doesn't have anything to do with your opinion. It has to be a fact. And those are the supporting details. And the O would be your conclusion. When you write something, you have to close it out so the reader is not left hanging, okay? So that's what you, how you set it up. Now, the first part that I want you to do, hold on, okay. Let's say, for example, you are going to write an essay or a report, and I'm looking, oh, here, let's say, and I have some cards here on different types of informational writing. There are types of informational writing that would be a how-to. Like, for example, uh, how, how to study for a test. Let's say, think of a day when you had a really big test to study for. Of course, all tests are important, but this was one that you really wanted to do well on. How do you prepare for that test? Okay, so that was, that's one example, okay? Now there are other kinds like my favorite sport. Okay, you would write about your favorite sport or my favorite animal. Or if you're doing something about science, you might write about why rain is important, why it's important that we have rain. I'm going to be very basic again, and I'm going to show you how to write a rough draft on bike safety. Okay, very basic. Bike safety. Now, when you, when you start an essay on information, when you write it, you want to hook your reader. You want your reader to understand what you're talking about. So, for example, if I can find, well, I can't, I cannot find it right now. I'm not going to worry about it. Anyway, you want to hook your reader. There are different ways you can hook your reader. One way is to begin it with a question. If I'm writing about bike safety, I might say, um, have you ever ridden your bike? Now, I'm gonna scratch that. Okay, my topic is bike safety. Let's see, I'm trying to think. What could be a question for bicycle safety. Um, why? I'm going to begin with why. Why is it important? Okay. Why is it important to know about bike Safety. Okay. Question mark. Okay. That would be very easy. 
Uh, I'm going to skip that one. I really like this one where it says, you exaggerate. Do you know what exaggeration means? In fifth grade, there's a special word for it. It's called hyperbole. You know, like, when I rode my bike and crossed over um, the, uh, the highway, or not the highway, um, like, you know how they do those tricks on bikes? I don't know what you call it. I was able to, uh, my bike went high, high, high up in the air, you know. So you exaggerate, you know, when you go fishing and you really caught a fish that big. But in your writing you say, wow, it was so big, I could hardly pull it out of the water. You know, it's okay to do that in your writing, okay, because it's a piece of writing. The setting, okay, in a small school, tucked up in the hollow in Kentucky. Students are discovering the power of excellence. So, you might say, in a fantastic school, Matilda Harris, tucked away in the southern pines of Georgia, students are discovering bike safety. Noises. There's a special word for noises that you put into your uh, stories. Crunch, crunch, slurp. That's called onomatopoeia. That's a big word. So, bike safety. You might say, um, what's, well, think of sounds that maybe a bike like, Crash! Bang! Can you imagine if you didn't have your bike helmet on or your knee pads, what might happen to you when you're riding your bike? Okay, so you could do crash! Bang! That would make people visualize maybe somebody got hurt on their bike. Okay? And maybe an exclamatory sentence like, Wow, did you see that guy ride his bike around that corner so fast? He looked really cool. Unfortunately, he didn't have his helmet on and he crashed. Okay? Bike safety. So then, after you think about what you want to write and how you want to put it together, you ask yourself, well, what do I want my reader to know? So, what do we want our reader to know, or readers to know, about bike safety? I'm going to come over here to my whiteboard. What do I want them to know? Let's think of some of those facts. Remember the eye I just showed you? We're going to come up with some ideas. So, here in the middle, I actually think I will turn it this way now. What is my topic? Bike safety. Okay, bike safety. Okay. I'm going to put a big circle around it. I want my reader to know three facts. Okay, so those facts would be my details. Okay, so here's a detail. What kind of detail? Do I want my, hmm, let's see. Just to let you know, Alexis Tesh is videotaping me, and I'm going to be asking her some questions. Alexis, what are some things that, bike, that we need to know about bike safety? You should probably always wear a helmet <gasps> to protect your skull. Okay, a helmet. Wear helmet. Okay, that's right. We need to wear a helmet. Um, bike safety should... Alexis, should we ride our bike in the middle of the road? No. Okay, so where should we ride our bike? On Either on the concrete or in your property. Okay, so maybe the sidewalk, right? Oh, let me put, where do we ride our bike? Where? Where should you ride your bike? Where? Where to ride? 
bike. I have a good one. How about taking care of your bike? Taking care of bike. Because I remember when I was younger, my chain on my bike was always rusty and it was always coming off and I, because I didn't take care of it. Okay, you want to make sure that everything is stable and cared for on your bike. So this would actually be a paragraph. That would be a paragraph. That fancy letter right there, that's just another way of saying paragraph. And this would be a paragraph. What I'm doing right here, I know you guys know what this is. This is my pre-writing. And whenever your teacher tells you, okay, you need a graphic organizer in writing, it's called the pre-writing. Your graphic organizer is your pre-writing, which means you're getting your ideas all together. Okay? So right now, we know we want to talk about taking care of the bike, wearing a helmet, and probably the pads too, I would say, and where to ride the bike, places that are safe to ride the bike. We have our pre-riding set up now. Okay, now we're going to go back over here. After the pre-riding, I look at, I look at my pre-riding, and now I'm going to start my rough draft. I know you've heard of these words before. Shouldn't be, it shouldn't be anything new. Another way of saying rough draft is sloppy copy. In your rough draft, you don't have to spell everything right. And what I recommend, and I know your teachers have told you this, in a rough draft, you skip lines. Always skip lines. Do you know why you skip lines? Because in a rough draft, you're going to go back and you're going to cross words out. You're going to write things in the middle and on the side. You're going to circle a word because it might be misspelled. Is it okay to misspell words in your rough draft? Is it, Alexis? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. But when you have your final copy, everything is neat and organized, okay? But we're not going to get, we're only going to get to the rough draft right now, kind of like the outline of it. So we know we're going to hook our reader. This is, we're just going to say this is going to be our hook. I decided to use a question for my hook. Remember, there are other ways to hook your reader, but I'm going to use a question. Or, let's see, now, now my introduction. Your introduction is not just one sentence. Your hook is usually the very first sentence, and also um, your topic sentence. So why is it important to know about bike safety? If I'm reading this, I say to myself, oh, I know that this is about bicycle safety. If you want to be very simple, you don't even have to worry about a question. You can just say, um, bike safety is very important. Is that a topic sentence? It's a topic sentence because the reader knows, oh, I'm getting ready to read about bike safety and the reasons why it's important, okay? Now, so you would write a couple of sentences. Why is it important? What could we say? Uh, do most kids have bikes? Lots of them. Yeah, a lot of them have bikes. So we might say something like uh, children Ride bikes. 
I know one thing, I see a lot of you guys riding your bikes in the morning to school, so I'm going to say children ride bikes to school every day. be very sad if I didn't make it to school on time. If, maybe, um, well, remember, it's about safety, so what if they're riding their bike from uh, one side of the street to the next? It'd be very sad if what? A car hit my bike. Um, a car hit someone. Riding their bike. Maybe they didn't have the reflectors on their bike. Maybe they were going too fast. They didn't look both ways. So we don't know why that car would have hit them. So that is my introduction. Now, remember we said we're going to talk about helmet pads, where to ride bikes, and taking care of the bike. I think since my uh, introduction was kind of a little bit about, you know, getting hurt, I might talk about maybe where to ride your bike. Should I do where to ride my bike or the helmet pads first? What do you think, Alexis? Um, where to ride your bike. Where to ride your bike. Okay. Excuse me, you guys. I need to take a little drink. So you said where to ride your bike? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. There are special words to make this flow. Now that I'm done with my introduction, I'm getting ready for another paragraph. And I didn't indent, but that's something you need to always do. With a new paragraph, see, I'm indenting. Remember, this is my rough draft, so I'm going to mark it all up. Okay, I should have, uh, that's a paragraph and I should have indented. I'm going to say, uh, the, oops, because I want to sequence everything, the first, you notice that word first? The first thing, uh, let's see, the first thing, You should do is know the safe places you can ride your bike. Okay, and I'm not going to write everything out because it would take too too long. But then you would talk about the different places. You might even uh, talk about the places that you shouldn't ride your bike. Like, I would never ride my bike on the side of a highway. Okay? I would never ride my bike in an area that doesn't have a lot of lighting. So you think about that. So that's the first. That would be the, the first thing. You would write about all these things about where to ride your bike. Now... I'm going to the next paragraph. What should we write about now, Alexis? The knees and pads. The knees and pads. Okay. Okay. Uh, what can I say for my transition word? Now, I, I might say, now that you know about where to ride your bike, you need to know what to wear as you're riding your bike. Ooh, I kind of like that. So you would describe wearing the pads and uh, why it's important to keep your head safe. Okay? So you would get all that down. And then, you know, the next paragraph would be... I'm running out of room. The next paragraph, uh, we're talking about uh, taking care
care of your bite, the different things you should do to take care of your bite. And last but not least, what did we say goes at the very end? The Taking care of your bike. Well, no, the very last paragraph. Look over here again, Alexis. What do we call this? Conclusion. The conclusion. That's a fancy word to say we're ending it. How do I want to end it? I'll give you a big hint. I told this to the fourth graders the other day. Your topic sentence. All you got to do is rewrite your topic sentence in just a different way. So if I say, why is it important to know about bicycle safety? I'm going to close it by saying, there, maybe there are many reasons. Uh, it's very important for everyone to practice bicycle safety. And I hope you learn something from my report. Something like that. Just close it by restating what you set up here. And that's it. Now, what I just explained to you is a very basic outline for informational writing. There's a lot more to it, and there's a lot more to writing, but I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm just giving you the, uh, the very basic. So if you want to know any more or have any more questions, your teacher can either email me or you can write me a note. If I need to put um, uh, like, a, like a little note box, like a little mailbox outside my door, you can put a note in it, okay? Because I would love to help everybody with their writing. Again, this is informational writing. The next time, we'll talk more about um, either I'm going to talk about how to add more, uh, uh, how to organize it more, and the style in your writing, or I'm going to talk about narrative writing. If your teacher wants narrative or more information on information, more information, that really made sense. More information on informational writing, just let me know. Okay? Talk to you later, and I hope you learned something. This is my first time doing it, so I was kind of rough on the edges. See you later. Bye.